Hi folks. Well, it may not look like much, but I actually got a significant amount accomplished on my Wingnut Wings Sop with Pup build in the last two or three days. The machine gun was added, the Vickers machine gun, and it fit. <laughs> the uh, side panels uh, right behind the rotary gnome engine cowling were added and in fact the uh, gnome engine was assembled and put inside the plane. The uh, fin and the rudder were added and I have added the fuselage and rudder fin decals. I always find it's helpful to put the rudder and fin decals on before actually attaching them to the tail in the uh, back of the plane. And that was even recommended in the instructions. I also find it easier to get decals that are going to be sort of on the fuselage between the wings in place. Um, and so now comes the tricky parts or the next tricky parts, which will be wing attachment. I already found that the wing almost balances on those rear cabane struts. They're in exactly the right place. As always, tolerances for the wing nut wings kit are next to none. Now, that's a good thing and a bad thing. <laughs> the good thing is, as I've said many times, when you get it right, it's right. Um, but you've got to be extraordinarily careful and precise. Maybe that's not a bad thing either. So probably a really important part uh, of the next steps will be thinking about what I do before I do the execution of adding the wings, the landing gear, and of course the rigging. I have to make a decision about the rigging whether I'm going to use my old favorite um, Easy Line, which I've been using on other 132nd scale kits and 148th, or whether I'm going to use the SBS generic wire strips. And these are actually what they sell SBS models out of Hungary for 148th, but the diameter, or actually the width, because they are flat, um, is either 0.3 millimeters or 0.35, and that exactly corresponds to what Wingnut Wings suggests to use. Um, I've used smaller versions. I've used the 172nd scale for the small planes and loved them. I've used Easy Line, found that pretty easy. This is actually a little bit neat, neater. I mean that literally neater, and. Uh, the fact that it's flat is not an issue because the uh, RFC and RNAS planes had a flat rigging uh, wire cables. You know, not the control cables, but those that were for tension on the wings and other support structure. So I'm probably going to go with these, which means they go in last rather than attaching line to the top wing before it's placed on. So that's probably what I'm going to do, uh, but not this weekend. Finally, uh, I have this wonderful book called No Parachute, which was published in the mid-60s by Arthur Gould Lee, who was an RFC pilot in 1917-1918. He got to the Western Front um, in May, of 1917, just a month after Bloody April, and he served on the Western Front on front lines, flying for most of that time a SOP with PUP. The squadron was finally re-equipped with camels in September, October of 1917, and he served on the front lines until uh, actually January of 1918, after which he was recalled back for rotation to uh, the UK where he served on home defense. Absolutely wonderful book, first-hand account. It takes the form of letters he wrote to his wife as well as diary entries. I'm pretty sure that the letters to his wife were expanded at the time of publication because there's a lot of stuff in those letters that I don't think ever would have 
pass the military censors in terms of going back home. Uh, very moving account. Um, what is just absolutely um, amazing is just how unreliable the uh, single Vickers machine gun was in his first two months. He probably had gun jams <laughs> on more than half of his flights, and it was, of course, just a single gun, which uh, caused him no end of grief and extra excitement and danger. Uh, but he moved on. He survived the war and actually stayed in the RAF to rise to the rank of Air Vice Marshal, retiring, I think, just after the end of World War II. I highly recommend that book, No Parachute by Arthur Gold Lee, for anyone who's interested in real history about the Great War and how it affected the, uh, the men who uh, flew uh, in combat day after day. Okay, well, we're going to let those decals dry and set, and uh, then I'll proceed with the last steps of the play in a couple days. Thanks.